we're going to talk about uh, installing uh, Web Dispatcher today. Uh, what I have here in front of me is a, uh, a brand new um, uh, SUSE Linux box. Uh, essentially, uh, in my media directory, I've got I went ahead and downloaded the host agent. I went and let and downloaded the SAP Web Dispatcher SAR file, and I've got SWPM installed. And with SWPM, uh, you know, you extract it and uh, you just run uh, SAP inst. Uh, and this is some SP20, and, I, and, and our goal here is to install a Web Dispatcher 749. So the latest Web Dispatcher in a Unicode format uh, is what we're going to install on this host. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect uh, instance. Again, it uh, gives us all the information that we need up top, kind of letting you know what version of etc. Uh, down on the bottom, I'm going to say generic options. And again, we're installing a web dispatcher, right? Web dispatcher is part of, uh, you know, potentially part of solution manager scenarios. It's part of every S4 HANA scenario out there. That's why this video is so valuable, is that every S4 HANA customer that uses Fiori has to have a web dispatcher, and you're going to use this video to do so. Uh, so we have web dispatcher Unicode. Hit next. Uh, we're going to start a new run because uh, I did a mock run before the video just, just to validate. Um, so we're starting a new run here. Um, first thing we're going to do is define parameters. And, you know, one of the common myths is that it takes, you know, a lot of time to install Web Dispatcher. It's three downloads, folks. It's host agent, Web Dispatcher, and software provisioning manager, and you're done. I'm literally logged into an SAP, uh, I'm sorry, a Linux server. Uh, that has nothing on it. There's nothing on it. I, I've just installed, uh, 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 just logged in as root, uh, and that's it. Uh, so this is a completely fresh system. And, and choosing my SID, for us it's web, could be whatever you need. Uh, password for all users. Next. Leave the password. Leave the, these are the UIDs, the group IDs on Linux. If you want to change those, you can. Uh, default is not to. Hit next. Again, it's looking for two files, the web dispatcher and the host agent. So we're going to hit browse. We're going to select uh, my media folder. And, hit, and what it's going to do when I click next is browse that folder slash media for those SAR files and make sure that they're there. And it says available, right? So it found the two SAR files, which is great. Hit next. I mean, as Software Provisioning Manager is executing, I uh, want to throw a shout out to Boris, the uh, software owner for, for some, uh, SWPM at SAP. He's the product manager that owns the Software Provisioning Manager. I'm running SP20 here. Uh, every time they uh, they create a new version of the tool, it gets better and better. So here we are, uh, Software Provisioning Manager SP20 installing Web Dispatcher 749. And there I, I selected an instance ID. Uh, I'm not going to connect this to a backend system uh, because, uh, again, we, we installed Web Dispatcher for, for multiple backend systems. And, and right here, if you do this, it'll just connect it to one. Uh, you obviously could, but... Uh, the best use case for Web Dispatcher is that I can connect multiple backend systems. I can connect business objects. I can connect uh, VW. I can connect the S4. Uh, I almost said ERP. I can connect the ERP as well. One Web Dispatcher can service everything. Uh, in terms of ports, um, you know, uh, there's cases where we need HTTP uh, because people, you know, sometimes don't remember to type in HTTP, so we redirect to HTTPS. I leave that there, um, and I change this to depending on incoming protocol. Um, so again, SAP would have you configure just HTTPS and always encrypted. Again, in the real world, people still use, need port 80, and, and so we do our automatic redirect. So there you go here. I have it. Now, naturally, I'd love to be able to type in 443 here, but by, by default, uh, it's not going to let me uh, bind to a port that's owned by the operating system just yet. There's, an, there's a utility after Web Dispatcher is installed called ICM Bind uh, that, that, you, that you can use to uh, use port 80 and 443. We'll do that after the installation. All right, uh, no need to activate ICF nodes because we're not connecting to a backend system right now. Click next. 
right? Password, it's all good. Again, security feature, you know, removing users from the SAP, uh, uh, SAP Inst group. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it manually afterwards. Again, this is, uh, it is, it is obviously a good thing to do. Uh, it creates a little bit more work for you later on. Naturally, at, at the end of the uh, wizard, I have all the settings that I've selected, my master password, uh, my SAR files, uh, the ports I'm turning on initially, and that's it, right? So I hit next. So behind the scenes here, let's see, behind the scenes, you can see all the activity going on, what it's doing and extracting, etc. And it says uh, starting the instance, right? So uh, within this short video, we've installed a brand new web dispatcher on a Linux host. Uh, don't be fooled that this is a, a weak install because it is not a true full NetWeaver system. It's a web dispatcher. It doesn't have a database. Uh, it only has three downloads required, and it's very easy to install. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll check on the system as soon as it's done here. Oh, still, still checking. It's going to go through and clean up the installation here shortly. yet not yet as always with the software provision manager uh, you can click on log files activities that are going on is Should be getting close. All right, it's uh, looking at log files, and it says uh, execution of service has been successfully completed. Um, so within that short amount of time, uh, you know, we click OK. Right, so within that short amount of time, we 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 have the feedback from SAP, and I'm, I was going to try to connect to the um, admin console just to check it out. So we hit enter. Again, here's that HTTPS port that we were working with before. 
Um, this is the user that you created earlier. Uh, and you can see here um, the active services and web dispatchers up and running. It's now ready to do, uh, now ready for configuration. Um, so, you know, you would need to install your SSL certificate. Uh, on here, you need to connect the back end systems through editing um, the web dispatcher configuration. That'll be an, an additional video here on our YouTube channel. Uh, but in general, you know, in a, a short 15-minute uh, video, we installed the Web Dispatcher using Software Provisioning Manager on a fresh Linux system. Uh, very easy to do. Thank you all for joining.